Arthur Thorson and Kaylee Bryson, row number eight, Sammy Swindell and Jade Avedition. Then it's Justin Grant and Brandon Wealthy, Tim McCready, and Ricky Thornton Jr. making up your 20 cars, going for 20 laps here at the O'Reilly Auto Parts Invitational Race of Champions. Guys, should be a lot of fun. Our first real, real good preview of a hint of what Saturday night could look at, plus a few, minus a few, shuffle a couple of positions here or there, but uh, your elite of the elite are coming out here for the race of champions, and uh, first chance to measure themselves against each other. Yeah, I think the big thing we got to look at here is how gnarly this racetrack is. We got <laughs> a solid curve all the way around it and a, a slick, slow bottom, so it's going to be uh, tricky for you guys. I think your first, you know, two, three, four guys in line all maybe kind of mind their P's and Q's, but if you get racing back there in the mid pack, don't be, um, you know, don't be surprised if you see some contact and some hard nosed racing, just guys trying to get to the front, see what they really got. So it's uh yeah, I mean, these guys don't hold back. These are their, their cars for their qualifying night, but they're not afraid to lay it out there on the line for this race of champions. Yeah. And you talk about these drivers that have done it so many times, like Justin Grant, like Tanner Thorson, but pretty cool for, uh, Hank Davis to be a part of this you know this is kind of one of those moments you really realize like you've done something in this building to make this make this event and uh, it's pretty cool to see some first timers I involved in this as well because you are being recognized as much as you know just an opportunity to, to race against the best but you're being recognized as one of the best in this building in your own discipline of motorsports or what you've done in this building in the past and so uh, it's a celebration of that and I think I love that it's on Monday because it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the week and gets people excited again because it's a long week, right? And if you're some of these folks that, especially some of these drivers are not running until Thursday or Friday, you know, it can kind of be a little bit of a drag to kind of wait to get your qualifying night. But to have this event on Monday to celebrate the history of the Chili Bowl, what it means, pretty cool. Someday, Clinton, when you're in this race of champions because yep. you've won the Chili Bowl or whatever <laughs> the heck it is it's going to be that gets you in there. Would you prefer it to be on your prelim night or off your prelim night? Probably off my prelim night. That way, you know, you don't feel the pressure of having to um, race this race and then turn around and run another one. And, you know, what can we do? I, I understand the laps are important. And, you know, like Chase Briscoe is going to use this to have feedback for his prelim night feature. Yep. But, uh, you know, sometimes a little bit of time to run your race, take your time, break it down, think about, you know, what could we have done, not rush those thoughts, you know, what, you know, what can we do to be better um, that, that suits me better. So I think that's probably the majority of these people in the building. Um, you know, if you have a little bit of time to break down your race, just think about it for a day or two and then, mm -hmm. then reapply on a prelim night, I think that's probably the best plan of attack. And, you know, I mean, God forbid something goes wrong, then you're not rushing near as badly or having to, you know, which one do we drop out of? What do we do? Um, right. However that plays out. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably rather have it on a, a separate night. You're in the situation where you feel like your race night is giving you enough data on your race car to begin with that the extra, yeah. what's it going to end up being? Probably 25 laps total yep. here that you're getting at speed is not going to do you as much good as if it were to be something you can apply for later in the week, right? Yeah, and, you know, selfishly speaking, I'm kind of a one-man band back there. It's me and my car owner, Scott. Yep. Um, you know, it's it's just us two. So a lot of these guys have better crew guy or more crew guy. I'm not going to say better crew guy. They have more crew guys. Sure. And uh, just more manpower to get, get the job done on things like this. So, yeah, they can, you know, afford to take some of those chances. And, you know, whatever, you know, mentally is going to make them feel the best. I think that's what you do. Well, drivers getting to whip around a little bit, put a little speed under the tires as they take a look at this Expo Raceway. This is Brandon Welty in the work area right now. I see Brian Ward down and on hand taking a look at the number three machine, one of the fan voted drivers to get. Yeah, Caleb, I believe this is one of the new uh, Honda S-Slingers that they've been working on. They were posting a little bit about it on their social media. And he came in here, he was calling for uh, this gentleman that's come down and checked the engine, he's looking at the individual uh, coil packs here. That's, I think he's down a cylinder on it. That's Brian from Esslinger. He's one of the head guys at Esslinger here representing them. Yeah, it, it definitely seems like there's something in the spark plugs, those coil packs, something is not firing properly. You would definitely rather have this happen in the race of champions than you would during your qualifying night, that's yep. for sure. So add that one point into it. Yeah into the uh, mix there. But Wealthy's going to push. Looks like he's going to join at the back of the field here. So down a cylinder, be darn. We're going to give it a shot. 
hey, you made it. You made it by fan vote in the race of champions. Yeah. Go runner, right? Go reward the people who voted you to come in and at least give them some laps. And that was a late addition, too. I saw Kaylee Bryson before the driver's meeting today. She was like, they were packing up, ready to go. And somebody said, hey, by the way, we're doing a fan vote. She immediately took to social media. And here we are a few hours later. They were... They were they weren't and they're prepared in. to race today and they're in. Yeah. And both her and obviously we knew Sammy was gonna be in, but she said it was it, pretty cool to learn that she got to you know to race today and take part in it. Obviously a dream come true for her as a local uh, that's been coming to this chili bowl since she was, you know, probably could remember and getting to run with her hero, Sammy Swindell, and now get to be in the race of champions too. So building, good opportunity. Building quite the legend for herself here yeah. within the expo as we're ready to go. Lights go out in the race of champions, Chris. Two by two they go. Some of the best to ever do it in their own right and discipline and in this building set to do battle. The race of champions who turns three and four, Briscoe on the loud pedal, we're underway. Tyler Courtney to the outside, gonna trail in that second position. Here comes Logan Seavey, quick qualifier up to third. Jesse Love to the bottom of the racetrack, lap one goes to Briscoe. Top four trying to spread out as there goes Courtney on the attack down to the low side. Briscoe, line change up high, feeling good as he dives to the bottom of one, dicing it up for second. CV sticking the nose in on Courtney. Yeah, Tyler Courtney in defense mode right now. CV, we saw how fast his car was in qualifying, now on the bottom, trying to get back up to Tyler Courtney to make another run at him as Briscoe continues to lead. And it's a gap back to Jesse Love. Actually make that Spencer Basin got to pass Jesse Love there for that spot. Whew, Tyler got tight in that corner. Car did not want to get around the corner. There goes CB to the inside with a little bit of Basin coming up to challenge in the third spot. Two, Look. three, and four in your screen. Tyler Courtney, Logan CB, and there's Spencer Basin looking to get involved. Logan Basin. really wants to be the leader when he gets to Chase Briscoe here to try to get around him, but Tyler screwing up a few times is allowed Chase Briscoe to get away as we're starting to click off the laps and Spencer Basin's coming on strong. Yeah, it opens the bottom for Basin, who again was upside down yesterday. Had to repair that car yesterday afternoon, but don't look now. Here comes Carter Sarf challenging fourth for Basin. Carter Sarf out of nowhere to get himself involved in this top five battle. Quick correction, looks like we're going 25 as opposed to 20 in this one. That's what the ticker's showing us, so a little more race left to go than what we thought as CB continuing to follow Courtney around the high side one and two. Everyone's found the top side of this racetrack now, three and four, the cushion starting to develop. Sarf still rolling the bottom. Courtney again having trouble off a turn four, opens the door for CB. Slider for second, he's got it. Really smart move there by Logan to see Tyler's mistake and just try to pounce on him right then and there. Protective slider in three and four. He's gonna set his sights on Chase Briscoe with 15 laps to go. Down on the bottom goes Courtney to try to get him back. And that brings Baston into the picture with Sarf now attacking up on the high side. Two cars trying to go side by side for it as quickly the gap between Briscoe and CB got real small. Yeah, CB got a little tight there on the top side last time by Briscoe able to hold him off, but Logan just being meticulous. When does he attack? He's going to do it right here. Bottom side of one and two. New leader, Logan Seavey. Boy, that car looks just as good as it did last year. If not, just a hair better already as Briscoe gets into the cushion. Now the door opens up for Courtney on the high side, looking for position two. Big mistake by Courtney there to get tight in one and two. Allows Briscoe to gap us up a little bit. Both those guys need to try to get in line and just run some clean laps here if they want to have a shot of running in Logan Seavey. 11 laps to go, and already Logan you can see if you can see Tim McCready, the first car of the end of the lead lap here. So lap traffic could be an issue coming up as Courtney tries to hound Chase Briscoe for that second spot. Sarf and Baston, in your top five. Here comes Cannon McIntosh from deep in the field, challenging Baston for fifth. McIntosh started ninth, looking to crack into the top five here on Baston, who was last year's Race of Champions winner. Hank Davis starting to flash in the picture as well. The battle, though, is all mid-pack, second, third, and fourth. Courtney with a run down to the bottom of three. Here comes Tyler Courtney. Oh, Briscoe got tight as well. Around goes Courtney for that spot. Briscoe back to third. May lose more. Here comes Carter Sarf with the slider to one and two to take over third. Sarf really impressive this year to move up into the third spot. Kind of a sleeper, I would say, coming in this race of champions. Really showing out right now with six laps to go. He started eighth. He's picked up five positions amongst the best of the best as Carter Sarf taking full advantage of this. It's Briscoe and McIntosh we're watching for fourth at the moment as Logan. Oh. Oh, trouble in got... front of your leader. And that's Jade Avedisian, Justin Grant. 
but you were just calling it. CV was in the thick of lap traffic, had to get on the binders, almost stalled it out, it looked like, for a second, able to keep going. Grand and Avedisian at the time running 12th and 14th, respectively, between them. As we'll backtrack a second and reset this field, breathe for a couple of seconds. We've only got seven laps to go when we get back to it. Logan Seavey took the race right around the midway point of it. He is your leader. As Grant gets pushed back off in the two, Tyler Courtney is second, Carter Sarf is third from eighth. Nice run for him. Chase Briscoe fourth, Cannon McIntosh fifth, Spencer based in sixth, Hank Davis seven. Tanner Thorson is in the eighth spot at the moment. Thorson started inside of the seventh row, so he's made some progress. Corey Day nine, Jesse Love 10, David Gravel 11, Zach Dom should be 12 when we restart. Brent Cruz 13, Sammy Swindell 14, Kaylee Bryson 15. Ricky Thornton Jr. in the 16th spot from what we see right now. Guys, it's been a topic of discussion outdoors all year, how good Logan CV is on this SP3 tire. And it was noted that when he drove for Keith Coons multiple years ago when he won his first USAC championship, they won almost every race on SP3 tire. And it, back then you had the option of an SP2 or SP3, and Logan would always throw one on for the feature, it seemed like, and just come to life. And, it was a big topic coming into this, you know, how good is Logan going to be on this SP3 indoors, but how much knowledge does Kevin Swindell need to gain uh, before they kind of find that <laughs> speed? And it took no time at all. I mean, that should be a surprise to nobody, I feel like. But, man, Logan is just dominating this field right now. Lights are out, coming to seven laps to go this time by. Logan Seavey, what does Tyler Courtney have? Carter Sark, Chase Briscoe, as down the hill they go, back underway. Reminder that these cars do have a full run of cockpit adjustments from the shock, so they do have the ability to make themselves better or dial themselves out over the course of this competition. Back to action we go. Briscoe down on the bottom, trying to take a spot back from Sarf, who's up on the tie side. Here comes Hank Davis, the inside of Basin, back in your screen as you look at Cannon McIntosh to the top side of the racetrack. Cannon trying to make some moves up in that fifth spot, make that fourth, as here comes Sarf with the crossover, move to the inside. As they continue to battle for this position, McIntosh, crossover move, Tyler Courtney's there. He got a three-car battle for the second. Cannon's coming alive late here in this contest. Really bodes well for him as he has driven past second place Tyler Courtney and third place Carter Sarf. Does he have enough time to cut into the gap for CV? CV looks well gone, but the question's going to be car speed here. Does Cannon have anything to show to Logan here in the last few? McIntosh, huge mistake on the top of three and four last time by. Sunshine's going to get up underneath for second at two to go. So here comes Tyler Courtney, crossover move for McIntosh, and Logan CV at the white flag is gone. One more time around, looking to add a Race of Champions win to the resume. The last two times he's been on the track, he's been a feature winner in Tulsa. Race of Champions to Logan Seavey. Gives second to Tyler Courtney, McIntosh three, Sarf with an eye-opening fourth, Briscoe five, Thorson six, Davis seven, based in eight, day nine, and Zach Dom in position 10. Well, we talked about it after qualifying the statement Logan CV made. Well, after the race of champions, it's been heard by this entire building. I am the champion. Come beat me. Guys, when Logan CV's confident, I don't know if there's any better race car driver in the world right now. His racecraft is beyond good yep. as far as a thinking man's racer goes in the car. And we saw it as he made each pass. There was a, a block in the next corner, whether it needed it or not, just to be safe and you know, just not get stuck in a battle. Um, you know, Logan just crafted it or carved his way right through that field and just made it look easy. He didn't have a long ways to go. He started fourth, but every time the driver in front of him made the simplest error, he was ready to pounce. Let's go downstairs and hear from your winner.
Yeah, Logan getting ready to walk up here. Kevin made his way to Victory Lane and Amy. Big hug for Amy and a fist pump from Kevin. And we'll get him on to Victory Stage as he gets his Victory Fuel, the new flavor, Lucky Lemon. Logan, O'Reilly Auto Parts Race of Champions, champion in, in that race. You don't have a ton of time out there and you're starting fourth and you got good cars in front of you that were fast. How hard is it? I felt like you ran a patient race to stay patient and kind of find those spots like you did to make your move for the pass and for the lead. Yeah, it's just um, kind of what I've really just been doing all year. You know, when you have cars that are just so fast, you don't have to, you don't have to force issues. And, you know, I was um, just so comfortable. I knew, you know, 25 laps is short, but when you already start fourth, you know, you're right there. And uh, Sunshine was struggling as the cushion got bigger. And I just knew as soon as he bobbled once, I would have a good enough run to to slide him, and you know, it was the same way with Briscoe. So, uh, like I said, I just don't have to force moves. You know, if I if I don't have them, I don't take them. And then when I take the chance, I, I go for it, and I and I put them away quick, and I go get the next guy. But you can't do that unless your car's, uh, you know, it's just better than the guy in front of you, and and that's what I take. So, like I said, I've just been doing it all year with the Abacus guys, and now to come here uh, with this thing, it's just, you know, it's just so hard to beat this thing. And I'm just, you know, cruising around driving, and I'm just lucky to be the one in it. To get into lap traffic, how is that for you? Is that something you wanted to do just to kind of test to see where this thing is in lap traffic, knowing on your qualifying night and then potentially on Saturday night, that's something you're absolutely going to face? Yeah, you know, you know what's coming and you know you're going to have to deal with it. And um, you hope not to in this race, you know, with so many good cars, but uh, it's just a tricky racetrack and, and, you know, new tires and everyone's kind of guessing and um, just puts everybody a little bit behind. But um, yeah, it's nice to race around a little bit and I was able to hit the bottom a few times early and and do, you know, I thought I ran it well, but the cushion was just so dominant. And um, I think we're going to see that a little bit more than, than usual. Uh, this tire makes it harder to run the bottom and a little easier to run the cushion. So um, it's going to take the cushion up on the wall to really bring the bottom back into play or, or a little bit more moisture on the bottom. So um, I think it's going to be a lot really racy. And uh, man, like I said, this cushion's nice and, and big, and that's what we like to see. And uh, it just makes it fun as a driver. So um, and then you can't run it that hard unless you got a good car. So uh, that thing, you know, the wheels packed up to the mud cover but i uh, never biked or did nothing crazy so just that's how good this race car is how tough for those late race restarts as you mentioned this new right rear something a little bit different knowing that you kind of got to mix things up you've got competitive guys right behind you and a little bit of an unknown with the right rear yeah like i said it's uh different indoors with different wheels and stuff but we run outdoors and uh it's just really more forgiving on the cushions like i said it makes it a little easier and makes it harder to run the bottom and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but uh, I'm definitely going to make the races a lot more racy, I think, and see cars move around quicker. So, um, And then late race restarts. Anytime you get a late race restart with a big cushion like this, your tires you know, lose air under caution, and you got to be mindful of that and not you know, blast it too hard on the first lap. And um, you know, the, the first thing is just getting down the front track and making sure you get away, or if not, you get slid. And they move the screen, so it's harder to see, um, which is great, I think. Uh, you can still peek out if you try, but you really got to go out of your way to see it now and uh, makes it a lot harder. So I think they're doing a good job with, with everything, and I'm just uh, so excited to get to Friday now. O'Reilly Auto Parts Race of Champions winner. Congratulations, Logan. Thank you. It feels good. Jelly Ball, make some noise for Logan CB. Logan CV, great race car driver, pretty darn good interview as well, and uh, dropping some knowledge out there on the tires, wheels, etc. situation, the what's going on as far as the SP3 is concerned, the racetrack, and how we think it's going to play out for the rest of the week. There was a lot to be learned there from Logan. Yeah, I think his, uh, his knowledge goes well beyond of how to drive a race car. He's, you know, built the knowledge of, what, you know, what do we need to do to these race cars to make them faster and understand the changes that the crew chiefs are making and what to expect to feel, and I think that's why you just see Logan TV such a, a well-rounded race car driver at you know at this age and or this stage in his career, um, whether it's Silver Crown, midgets, wing sprint cars, even. Yep. Um, he can kind of jump in it and just go good in everything. A lot of interesting stories coming out of that main event. Uh, Logan TV, your winner: Tyler Courtney, Cannon McIntosh, Carter Surf, and Chase Briscoe, one through five. Tanner Thorson, Hank Davis, Spencer based in Corey Day, and Zach Dom round out the top 10. Then David Gravel, Jesse Love, Brent Cruz, Ricky Thornton Jr., and Kaylee Bryson, Sammy Swindell, Jay Davidisian, Tim McCready, Justin Grant, and Brandon Welty, the official, unofficial finish on this one. 
B mains are coming up next. I think we need to take a time out. So we'll take a break. And we will have the B features coming up next as you watch your live coverage of the 38th annual Chili Bowl Nationals here on Flow Racing. <laughs> 